All right, you're all set. Thank you, you know. I'm calling this uh, meeting of governance organization and legislation uh, to order, seeing that we have quorum. It is July 1st, um, and pursuant to Governor Baker's order of March 12, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of GOL is being conducted via remote participation. Um, there will be a time later in the meeting for public comment. At that point, if there is public present, I will read the instructions for public comment. Um, today's meeting is primarily, if not exclusively, focused on a series of interviews we're going to do beginning in a few minutes um, uh, for candidates for the uh, position of resident non-voting member on the Finance Committee. Um, and that's going to take up uh, the first hour at least of our session. Uh, our plan at the moment is to then deliberate and come to a decision if that's possible. Um, it turns out that we do have a second meeting um, July 15 um, before the next official council meeting. So uh, just to remind everyone that when I first had the schedule in mind, my understanding was there would be an official, the next official council meeting would be July 13. It's July 20. So we do have actually a second meeting, um, at least planned, um, before uh, the council meets. If we have time after that, um, I have one item, other item on the agenda, um, but it's not pressing now, but at least I don't think it is because again, we have another meeting before the next council meeting, but there is one zoning bylaw we need to look at briefly and declare clear, consistent and actionable. And then Lynn has asked that she get a few moments at the end of the meeting under items not anticipated to uh, speak to the committee about the town manager evaluation process. So that's what we have on our agenda. Before we open it up to um, our first interview, any questions from my uh, colleagues about the format? Um, basically, I'm going to uh, make sure the candidate can be heard um, and then um, in, in the, perhaps introduce you all. I think in some cases the candidate will already know you all, but uh, just make sure that you are all introduced. And then I was gonna go immediately to uh, questions. Um, and I assume that, that you all have at least one question prepared. Um, but if you don't, then uh, I will then turn to the candidate and ask them if they have any questions for the committee um, about finance or about uh, anything really related to the position. And then I was gonna be, end the interview um, and then go on to the next interview. They're uh, scheduled to be 15 minutes in length with a five minute gap between each. So it gives us a little bit of leeway, but not a lot. So um, I want everyone to ask the questions they want to ask, um, but I also want to tr all of us to keep our eye on the clock, um, uh, unless you feel 15 minutes is not sufficient. But we have a few minutes we could run over, but I really don't want to get too far behind if we can. Um, any questions from my colleagues about the format? Lynn. I just want to mention that since you made your statement about public comment, the attendees have come in and several have raised their hand. So you may want to remind people that we will not do public comment till the end. Okay, um, I will again uh, remind people that public comment comes later in the meeting. Um, it will come uh, after um, side item number five. So it'll come after the interviews and after deliberation, um, there will be a period for public comment. If I could just Please. mention yesterday, this phenomenon happened and it appeared we had already gone through public comment before people started joining and it was all, all of this hand raising and all. And within about 10 minutes, uh, they all left. So I believe many of them uh, could potentially be potential Zoom bombers. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of names here that look pretty silly. Yeah, so I just be aware of that. Um, it resolved itself in CRC because as we continued our meeting and they were not recognized, they all left. Okay, so that is uh, for those of the public who actually take this seriously as we do. Um, we now see some of the challenges we face in trying to be fully transparent and still conduct our meetings, excuse me. Call from Marissa Rowe. Sorry about that. Something I forgot to do, turn off my phone. Any other concerns, questions, comments before we begin? We have our candidate present, our first interview 
candidate present. Um, so if we're ready, um, let's begin. Um, Bernie, I see you here. Um, yeah, I'm also here in two places. Yeah, I see two Bernies. This is interesting. Which <laughs> I, 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 I think I will switch off my phone. I was getting a, a, an error message that I have an unstable internet connection. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to switch off my phone. Okay. And hopefully, there, there's only one of me now. Good. Um, right. if, if things go south, I'll switch the phone back on. Okay. I um, want to just introduce everyone on the committee to you, but I believe you probably know most people here. Um, Actually, I know everybody. You do know everyone. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I think we can dispense with the inter uh, the introductions. Uh, everyone uh, welcomes your presence. And again, thanks you for putting yourself forward. And um, the way we're going to proceed is I'm just going to turn to uh, my colleagues and each one has a question they may ask and they have a follow-up either to that question or to another question if they wish and this should take us about 15 minutes. Um, near the end of those, at that period, at the end of that period, I'll ask you if you have any questions for the committee. Um, so that's, that's the format, okay? And so uh, I'm gonna start in alphabetical order, if that's all right, at least for the first time out. So uh, Pat, uh, do you have a question for Mr. Kubiak? Pat, you're muted, by the way. You need to unmute. Yeah, sorry, I, right. I have a plumber working and I thought you didn't want to hear that. You anyway, know, the electrician's um, just left here, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, in your statement of interest, you said that you have made mistakes, but you've learned from them. And I was wondering, what, is there a mistake that you made that really taught you a lesson that you feel would be of value for your work on the committee? Hmm. That, yeah, that's, that is a good question. I, I'm, I'm ha I'd have some difficulty right now bringing any one particular thing to mind. There were no unmitigated disasters, <laughs> I think, um, which I'm proud of. Uh, but my... Uh, <clears throat> Maybe... The lesson, that, the lesson that I took away from my experience in, in, in that is that you, you need to be open to all sorts of comments and all, sort of, uh, all uh, sources of information. You can't, um, it's a serious error if you say, well, I'm not gonna pay attention to so-and-so because they have no answer. End up using it is that um, you wanna make sure that uh, you, you pay attention fairly to um, Anyone who uh, who's affected, and some of those who aren't, because they may have some good ideas that you're ignoring. Um, but you, you know, you 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 end up um, uh, redoing budgets. You end up um, reconfiguring projects on the on the fly if if you don't pay good attention and and look look to all the time. Bernie, you're breaking up a little bit. I don't know, is anyone else having problems with audio? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I wonder if you want to switch your alter ego, if that will make a difference. Yeah, let me do that. I, I don't know if it'll help, but let's try it. Um, let me see. And we can see you fine on the phone. And yeah. I think that would make okay. it your connection. I think the phone works better. And Lynn, I was going to go to you next, if that's if that's all right. Okay. Is there any part of that path that you would like Bernie to you have a follow-up? No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So Bernie, um, I've heard bits and pieces about your uh, career, and you've certainly made yourself available to the town, and we totally appreciate that. Um, but could you just kind of, in a very brief way, talk about your uh, career and not spend tons of time on it, but just a few highlights you think would be useful for us? Well, I, um, I became sort of a uh, uh, municipal uh, uh, government junkie when I was living in Belchertown. And that was motivated by um, the train setting my neighborhood on fire. 
uh, which got me to interested in town government and, and looking at where um, things can happen in a more immediate fashion. So uh, I've been a selectman, I've been on the finance committee in Belchertown, I've been on the finance committee in Amherst, I've managed um, uh, Hadley, I've managed Deerfield and Northfield, um, and I've been a county commissioner as well. All of the, the consecutive with that is, is that the, that's all municipal government and it's where things can happen uh, quickly and effectively for folks. You make a decision, you can put it into practice in, in a matter of hours or days, not weeks or months, or in the case of the federal government, sometimes years. Okay. Lynn, a follow-up? Not at this time. Fine. Mandy. Well, thank you. Um, hi, Bernie. Um, hey. We obviously have entered a, an age of budget uncertainties right now in a way we haven't seen in decades or more. Um, it, a pandemic is really hard to predict anything versus an economic downturn of a typical sort. So I, I'm interested, since we're probably facing a year or two or more of this issue, um, if you could describe how you would approach the guideline recommending that the Finance Committee does um, for budgets to the council and then that the council then tries to adopt and recommend to the manager, the balancing of the operation and capital, operating and capital needs. Um, obviously this year we did that with completely decimating our capital. Um, and the use of reserves in sort of evening stuff out or not and how you would balance all of that, how you would approach those issues as we come into this era of uncertainty. Oh, um, you want a short answer to that? Short answer. Uh, <laughs> That's a hard one. one minute. You've got one minute. It, 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 well, uh, uh, you know, I think in, in looking at what's been done so far with the budget, I think folks are headed in the right direction. You look at um, uh, keeping in mind that a budget is more than a, a spending plan. It's a statement of value. It's a statement of what the church is. It's, it's a, a statement of policy. So uh, you, you need to look at that and keep that in mind so that you you don't end up um, setting aside things that are of importance. You need to look at what the town has to do. What's the, what's the bare bones minimum the town has to do to keep services together? Um, and, and sort of make sure that that's secured and that's secured out of um, reliable sources of money, which is basically the property tax. Uh, and then you, you can then begin to build on that. Um, and where you need to uh, reduce temporarily or compromise, you make that very explicit so that people understand that you, want, you know what you're doing, you know the impact of this, and, and you acknowledge that. Um, it's to run with not a lot of fluff. And that may come as a surprise to some folks, but typically there are. So you want to figure out what you can do um, that, uh, and, and where the where where what you can do immediately, what you might do in twelve month increments, uh, where there might op there where there might be opportunities. Uh, we're in a fairly low interest rate environment right now, so there may be some opportunities to borrow that wouldn't be there ordinarily, uh, and. He, that's not, a, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a more precise formulation for you, Mandy Joe, but um, it's a layered process. Look at what you absolutely have to do and then begin to build on top of that. Uh, there's some things that you may want to let go of. I mean, um, maintenance is, uh, deferred maintenance means broken. So you may end up um, with, uh, uh, in, in a, uh, a greater problem down the road. Uh, the decisions, for example, that was made about um, reducing the OPED payments by 50%. I thought that was a reasonable compromise, a reasonable action. Uh, it's not like OPED presents a bill that's gonna come due tomorrow. The threat is it will squeeze out uh, uh, other kinds of expenditures in the future. The other threat from not putting money into OPEB is uh, if, you're, if you're gonna borrow, um, uh, having a, a 
you know, making a routine and, and substantial OPEB payments like the town has been doing uh, signals to the market that you're, you're a good risk. So those are, you know, those are, those are two things that you can try to control. And um, you, you try to do that with every aspect of the budget. Thank you. A follow up, Andy? Not at this time. Okay. Uh, Andy. Hey, Bernie. Hey, Ian. So, so uh, I, I, this is a two part question. I'm going to make it be two parts. Um, what do you think are the reasons that the Charter Commission and recommending in, to be in the Charter the provision that allowed the Council to create um, citizen participation on the Finance Committee is uniquely done for that committee. So uh, what would you think are the reasons? Uh, I, I think that you know the Charter really tries to respect citizen input and, and, and values that. Um, so the, the putting some non-voting members on the finance committee was one way to give um, uh, folks who aren't uh, able to run for office or haven't chosen not to um, some input into, uh, into the budget and the budget process. So I look at those non-voting members as sort of a uh, 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 sort of a, a committee of citizens who can say to the elected officials on the committee, well, wait a second, um, you're, you're missing this, or we should be doing that, or this looks good. I, I think it's another way to just simply give a, a voice to uh, voice to people. And um, the charter seems to do that well. So then the second part of the question is probably pretty obvious. What do you think that you have um, uniquely to contribute to that particular goal for having uh, citizen participation on the committee? Well, you know, as I said in my statement of interest, I, um, this is something that uh, uh, I've had a, a lot of experience in, both um, formal and informal experience, uh, including being on the Finance Committee, the, the original iteration of the Finance Committee for five years. So um, that's what I think I'm bringing to this, is the, the fact that I've got some good experience. I can look at this as someone who um, is a consumer of services in town, not somebody who designs them or somebody who's responsible for managing them. Uh, I'm a consumer of services. Um, we pay taxes. I've got uh, uh, three grandkids that are growing up in Amherst now, so I've got a, a skin in that game as well. Um, and that, that's what I think I bring to the bring to the group. I said in statement of interest, I've been through um, a variety of experiences, and uh, uh, I can sit here and say, look, as as a as a citizen, as somebody who's dependent on the town for services, this is what I think is necessary. This is what I think would like to happen. But I also understand the mechanisms behind that and how that might happen, and where we are, where the town's constrained, and where it's not. I'm really chunk of, there's a what, half billion dollars in federal money sitting out there right now that um, hasn't been allocated yet. How's that, you know, what's Amherst share that and how's that gonna get used? Uh, that would be a question. It's something that I think I could, I could begin to approach as a, as a citizen. My colleagues, any follow-up questions or a second question that you wish to ask? Uh, before I, I turn to Bernie and ask if he has questions for the committee. You can just raise your hand or just speak up. Well, I guess it was just the one thing that, um, since I'm also chair of the Finance Committee, um, if you have questions for me about committee schedule, meeting times, workload, or things like that, um, uh, be free, feel free to ask. Okay. I, I don't have any questions at, you know, at the moment about Times I'm um, I, I'm doing some consulting, um, but I'm I'm not employed full time by any means, and I've got a good deal of flexibility in my schedule. So 
uh, I, I think I can, my personal schedule can match what the finance committee is up to and doing. Um, it's a, uh, it's sort of a benefit, <laughs> I guess, of, of not having to, uh, not having to work for a living. Um, and that's, you know, uh, yeah, I really don't have any questions for the committee. I'd like to thank everybody. I think I've, uh, uh, I've been reasonably active in town. Um, I think folks know me. I would like to be helpful to the town. And if this is, this is one way that I can do that. Um, I, one of the things that I think I bring to the mix here is that uh, uh, I've had a reasonable, reasonably diverse set of, uh, of experiences in municipal government. And so I, I'm not inclined to, um, I'm not inclined to panic and I'm not inclined to, uh, to, to overreact. And I think that will be valuable as we go down the next, uh, the next couple of years and look at what, what's emerging. Great. Thank you all. Bernie, thank you very much. On behalf of the committee for stepping forward, and uh, we, our plan is to deliberate today, so hopefully I will be getting back to everyone uh, sometime later today, or certainly no later than 24 hours. Great. Thank you, George. All right. Thank you. We'll take care. Bye -bye. Bye. Thanks, Bernie. Thank you, Bernie. Bye. So we have just a few moments to catch our breath. Um, the next candidate, I've asked people to uh, log in a few minutes early, um, but it uh, gives us a chance just to uh, have some quiet. <laughs> Format wise, that is that acceptable? People feel that works okay? Okay. Uh, speak up if you have concerns, if you'd like something changed. Uh, when we do the next round, I'm going to just uh, have uh, Lynn start. So I'll try to, you know, just have a different person start each time. Um, Can you give us the order, George? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, Joseph Jane is next, and then Jane Scheffler. And finally, Mary Lou is last. So it's Kubiak, Jane, Scheffler, and Tylman. I just received an email from Joseph Jane that he, he doesn't have an invitation, so I'm going to send him one now. That may be why he's delayed. Okay. Actually, I thought I saw him there for a moment, but let's see. I have a question. Can, can we can't, like one of the questions I have is, do, can we ask about how you would ban balance your work life and family life, or is that a no-no? It's a no-no. Gotcha. I thought it was, but. Okay. Against affirmative action. Yeah. Yeah. trying to catch up on other emails. Sorry. I'm That's quite all right. Um, I am also doing some other things, but as uh, soon as Mr. Jane joins us, um, we will, uh, right now, we're still actually on schedule. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't think any of us thought we'd actually keep the schedule, but we'll see. Um, we're not done. Don't jinx it. I know. I know. <laughs> if we're waiting a few minutes, uh, if you want to go one of the other agenda items, like what Lynn was going to report to us on right. evaluation or anything else you might deem appropriate, we could use time. That's, I can do that if you want. Well, we are literally at the time of his interview, so I'd like to give him the courtesy of if he can solve this problem, getting, um, and since I don't see he's not listed at the moment, he did, in fact, get, I'm sure, a number of links. <laughs> but I, I know the feeling sometimes where you can lose them, especially if you have lots of email. Um, but. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> but, 
Well, then why don't you begin? And if, if he appears, we'll, I may have to stop, but why don't you start? Let me, let me, one item I just want to mention, and that is that um, we, I would very much and hope you will agree that we are delaying the due date for people's response, except for counselors, of course, to the 15th. And it's because we've had a delay in getting things out. One of the staff people who's assisting me had an emergency. And um, so therefore we're not able to get everything out today the way we had hoped. So I want to go to the 15th, which is kind of a compromise between um, what we did say, which is the 12th and giving them a full on extra week. So I hope that that is acceptable. And um, the other thing is we are doing an adjustment on the email uh, for town council, it will make it will still come to all of town council. What we're trying to resolve and what I was going back and forth on here is do we remove Paul from the town council general email address. We do have to remove um, the CPOs and we have to remove um, the um, Dave Zomack. Um, and if we unless we create a special address for the staff to send their uh, responses to, which would be fine with me. We also have to remove Paul. And at, once I do that, or once that's done, I will remind counselors that if they are using town council at AmherstMA.gov that they, and they want to include Athena or any of the other people, they need to make sure they address them separately. We did this last year. We suspended for the period of time when uh, people are answering so that the responses from the community and the responses from others don't uh, go uh, to people they shouldn't go to. Okay. So those are really the only two updates. Mandy Jo was very kind yesterday and did an extensive review of the um, um, instrument once it went on um, online, if you will. And as a result, we have to make adjustments to that as well. And I'm not sure we'll get that done, but this, this the counselor, uh, you know, evaluation is not as time sensitive yet. So we're trying to do a trial run this year. So it feels better to counselors as we do it. I see that Joe is listed in the uh, attendees column. So yes, he is. I believe that. Um, okay, I'll bring him in. You can bring him in. You can ask him to unmute and then also. His Here I am. All right. Hello, all. Good to see you. <laughs> we had some te technical difficulties there. I'm sorry for the delay in uh, getting right. to you. It's all right. Uh, they never happen. Our, our systems are flawless. I don't know what's no, wrong with the system. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I don't know if you know everybody on the committee, Joe, um, but I'm going to introduce, um, starting with the council president, Lynn Griesemer. Mm -hmm. um, I know Lynn. Nice to see Good you. Good to see you, Lynn. Vice President, Andy Johanneke, and Chair of CRC. Um, hey, Andy Steinberg, Chair of Finance, and Pat DeAngelis, uh, Vice Chair of, of uh, this committee. And... Um, we all, first of all, are very grateful for your uh, willingness to step forward. And the format's pretty simple. I'm going to have each of the, uh, the committee members um, ask a question, and they have a follow-up either at that moment or later if they wish. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that's done, I'm going to ask if you have any questions for the committee. Of course, we have the chair of finance here and Andy Steinberg and uh, other members of finance as well. So um, if you have questions about the committee and how it works, yeah, you feel free to ask those. Um, we hope it'll take about 15 minutes. Um, so that's that's the plan. And uh, I was going to begin actually with uh, with Lynn. Okay. Right. Hi. So Lynn, I'm just going to um, just real quick. I'm just going to shut my door. I'm in my house in Maine, so uh, I don't want all the kids to get too crazy. So we understand. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Fire away. Thanks. First of all, the way we know each other, Joe is the um, finance committee liaison to the DPW Fire Station Advisory Committee. Exactly. Andy was the select board liaison. So the three of us have met 
under different circumstances uh, during that work. Um, so instead of having you give a bio, because mm -hmm. we didn't ask for that, and you've given us uh, some glimpse of that, I'd really like to you to reflect on your years with the Amherst Finance Committee mm -hmm. and just mention two or three things you've learned. Yeah, I think um, it was a real learning experience because I moved to Amherst, uh, I would say now about six years, five and a half years ago. Um, and my in-laws have always, and my wife is from Amherst and, and we moved out here with our two children. And of course we live in Amherst. And so I wanted to get uh, more involved and really learn about, you know, just more involved with the town um, and its capacity. And, and my kids are going to the public school system. Um, and I just felt it was a great way to learn about the inner workings of the town. Also, my background is in finance, so I was um, in personal finance with, uh, you know, Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley for, for 20 years in Boston. So um, that's why I sort of, uh, you know, steered myself towards the finance committee. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot in terms of, you know, how the sort of inner workings of the town um, kind of work and certainly how the, the politics of the town uh, can get very convoluted, uh, especially with town meeting. Um, and we were working on some very big projects, right? So we're looking at these big school projects, the library project, uh, DPW project, um, and these big undertakings. Um, and so I think I really, it was very valuable to see sort of how the constituency of the town members um, it had so many variants of opinions about things. Um, and at times, I guess personally, I felt uh, a, a little frustrated and, I, and I, I kind of felt that the democracy of the town, uh, the structure of that government maybe wasn't as effective as it could have been. Um, and when the new town council thought, I thought, well, yeah, maybe a more concentrated form of government could get things and push things through and, and things happen. So I guess I was geared a little bit more towards that vote uh, as opposed to sort of people like my father-in-law and many others I knew who wanted to keep that uh, town council um, intact, but, uh, or to keep the, uh, excuse me, the town meeting intact, that format of government. But, um, but you know, I learned a great deal um, also about the different departments of the town, again, the DPW and, um, and, and, and the fire station and getting to know those folks and the issues that they're dealing, dealing with. Um, not only in funding, but in, in other areas as well. So, um, yeah, I just found, you know, I found it really interesting and uh, I, I definitely learned a lot, but there's a lot more to learn as well too. So um, hopefully that addresses the, some of the questions. Thank you. Yeah. Mandy. Thank you. Um, I am interested in, I, I'm one of the members of this committee that doesn't actually serve on the finance committee. Um, yeah. So I have to rely on the finance committee for a lot of things, including their expertise on recommending guidelines for budgets and all. And we're in a pandemic, we know things are gonna be uncertain. So I'd, I'd like you to talk about how you approach, um, you know, or an experience you've had in terms of budgeting and dealing with budgets during economic downturns, um, how you might approach the balancing act that that requires, you know, between maybe an operating and capital or not. Um, mm -hmm. But but just talk a little bit about that and how you would approach stuff like that to during a finance committee meeting so that it can advise the council and the manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question, manager. And I, and I, I really don't have uh, to be honest with you, a lot of budgeting experience really, um, again, my background is in finance, but it's in more personal finance. It's not so much budgeting departments or, or small governments. Um, but in, in dealing with that, and in certainly in dealing with that in the past uh, through the town, um, you know, I think it's very important to hear everyone's side. Uh, you know, if we're going to sit there and make budget cuts to the school or, or something like that, you know, we really have to pay attention and sort of model that out and see what those small things that we may be cutting, what kind of impact that could have. So, um, you know, and, and scutting, uh, cutting like a school program or a lunch program or, or, or something like that. Um, you know, in the past, I, I don't think I've really looked closely at those ramifications. So that is something that I would really take into account if, if it was something, especially now, which I'm sure we're, we're looking at, um, you know, cuts in certain areas. What is the sort of the um, kind of impact that that could have that we're maybe not thinking about and try to model that out um, in in hopes of really making sure that we are moving forward in the direction and we're making the right decision. Um, 
so hopefully that maybe sheds a little color on that. Thank you with that. Yep. Okay. Andy. Good job. So hey. uh, I, uh, the question I was asking of uh, all the candidates is the Charter Commission uh, put something special in the Charter for this committee that it's not doesn't really exist in the Charter for other committees, and that's the possibility for the council to choose to have citizen members of the commit of a council committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, why do you think that the Charter Commission made that decision to place this opportunity in the Charter for this particular committee? That's a great question. I, I don't really know. So if, if you could just repeat that again. So the, what, how does it read in the charter that they, what the was charter, the, the, the charter committee, the, the charter specifies this opportunity to have resident members of this particular council committee, the finance committee. And what would, what do you think were the reasons that, uh, they might have chosen this particular committee as the one um, to create that opportunity? Well, I think it would just because, you know, residents have a vested interest in, in the town. I mean, you know, we live here, um, we use these facilities, we're impacted directly by, you know, our kids going to school here, we pay taxes here. Um, you know, I know I have a personal vested interest in the, in the overall fiscal health of this town. Uh, to make sure that we're budgeting properly, to make sure we're fiscally strong and sound. Um, Cause I live here and I care about this town and I wanted to see it, you know, flourish, but also flourish in a balance, uh, you know, in a balanced way. Um, and that's, as a resident, that's, that's very important to me. Um, so hopefully does that kind of address the question? Yeah. And that actually probably answered the second half of the question that I was going to ask which was uh, what do you bring to the table to meet that uh, vision? I think you probably have somewhat addressed it already. Yeah, I mean, I guess, um, you know, yeah, I'm very passionate about this town. Um, you know, in my, on my wife's family, they go back a long ways in Amherst. Uh, and, you know, again, I, my, my kids go to school here. Uh, and I, I want to see this town do well. You know, I live here. I live right by the high school. Um, you know, I want... I want to see this town advance, but I want to, I want to see it do, you know, do it in a, in a very, um, you know, logical, you know, just a, a well-balanced way as opposed to just saying, hey, let's build some more buildings. I mean, I think, you know, back to Mandy Joe's point, I think things have to be sort of balanced in terms of, you know, the, the things that we're undertaking, the way we're spending the money um, to make sure that it's, it's the right decision for this town and make sure that stakeholders are, overall, you know, it's tough to get them all in agreement, but we're, we're all moving sort of in the same direction. Um, and we're not pulling this town apart. Uh, because I know there's, there's a lot of passion in this town about different things. And I don't agree with a lot of it. But, um, but I, I, I feel like I love to be involved in this, uh, this community. Um, and I feel like this is a way I can, I can at least help. Yeah. That I'm your kid. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah. Oh, no Building problem. a little on Lynn's question. Your background, uh, you said, is in personal finance. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm interested in how you would translate or what values or experiences uh, will translate to your work on municipal finance. Well, I think it's sort of like underwriting projects, um, you know, do we have to put things out for a bond issue? I'm, you know, somewhat familiar with that uh, in terms of municipal finance. Um, and so, you know, I'm not directly, um, I don't, you know, I have never directly dealt with that, but indirectly in terms of, uh, you know, understanding municipal bonds, understanding interest rates, interest, understanding cost, uh, balance sheets. Um, that's something that I'm very passionate about. I still do. And I still, you know, talking to the library, looking at sort of their endowment, how it's managed, the history of that. Um, and that, that stuff is, you know, I still have clients. I still work uh, privately with clients in terms of managing their money. So 
Um, I, you know, I still advise a lot of people and higher net worth people. So I'm very familiar with financial markets, how they work, what's happening economically, uh, not just locally, but globally. Uh, I personally trade and help other people trade uh, uh, foreign currencies. Um, and so that, that's a, just a really area of interest for me. Um, and so, yes, to your, to your point, Pat, I don't have direct experience in terms of managing the municipal, uh, municipal budget and you know, understanding directly how we actually raise money and go to the capital markets directly. But I understand generally, in general, that concept uh, and how it can relate back to a uh, town budget and how we can potentially, um, you know, hopefully, how, how it relates back to our credit rating um, and how it can hopefully fiscally um, you know, keep, the, keep our uh, town budget sound. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any follow-up questions from my committee members? Or a second question for Joe? Lynn. Lynn, you, you got to mute. <laughs> you mentioned a couple of times. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned a couple of times uh, at, from your experience of being on the finance committee and now it, just talking with us, the whole issue of the capital projects. And I'd be interested to hear from you as to what else you feel the council should do to get citizen input with regard to the capital project. That's a tough one. And we discussed that uh, in the finance committee a lot, right? About how we could get citizens more engaged. And that was a really tough conversation. It wasn't a tough conversation, but I think it it's a tough undertaking to, um, and I don't, in a way, I don't know why, but there was a lot of things we were talking about uh, doing, uh, you know, obviously, I think we talked about this with the DPW too, about posting more stuff on the internet to really get the transparency and the information out to the public so they can make an informed decision. I think even with the DPW, Lynn, we did sort of an open house to try to enhance engagement with what's happening and the issues that the DPW specifically were facing, um, how that facility is just falling apart. I mean, when we toured that facility, that's, that's really impactful because I've, you're seeing firsthand the, the, how that facility is just coming apart and falling apart. And so getting that communication out there, I think was something that we talked about not only in DPW, but also uh, in the other capital projects. And it's hard and it's, you know, it's, it's not as easy as just saying, hey, let's post it because a lot of people seem to just overlook this. But I, but I think it's just, it's a discussion that I don't have an answer for you right now. But um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very important discussion that needs um, you know, further thought in terms of how we can engage the public. And I don't know, you know through the internet or social media or um, you know, direct interaction with touring the, uh, you know, the fire facilities and, and really showing firsthand. But I think a combination of all those things um, to try to make the public more acutely aware of, of these issues. Um, is important, but that's a great question, Lynn, and I think that's something that I, I would love to be a part of that conversation. Uh, and I, but I don't have a, a perfect answer for you as of now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other follow-up questions from my committee members? Seeing none, uh, Joe, an, an opportunity for you to ask the committee, including uh, members of my committee who serve on finance, any questions you have about finance committee. Um, it's work or any yes yeah. yeah so um I, I really don't have any uh, too many specific questions but just in terms of sort of the operation of the committee does it i know we used to uh put together um for town meeting um put together you know the the, the budget and talk about all these issues so the finance committee is just it just meets now with the the council and it reports to the council um and is that how that works as of yeah. now and do you want to answer? Uh, actually, we uh, occasionally will meet with the council, but most of the what all of our committees do is to provide um, sort of written reports before council meetings um, on issues that are related to the council that will come forward for council consideration. Uh, so we've actually been having discussions uh, right now about what it is that we want to do as far as uh, the finance committee uh, report to the council 
after we have a series of meetings with department heads about their sections of the budget. Yesterday, we met with the superintendent of schools and the library director and uh, how we went to um, have the whole committee involved in the development of the budget report that we will make in recommendations. And uh, what we, I think, recognize is that the big difference between the former form of government and the current form of government is that the council received the entire budget um, and uh, the, which didn't happen with um, town meeting. So mm -hmm. the finance committee had the uh, responsibility to kind of call the, the, the big budget down to a, a smaller readable piece. Whereas what we're, um, we've now have a council that has the entire budget mm -hmm. has, uh, spent some time looking at it. So we're trying to figure out what it is that we want to do after our meetings with staff and to be most uh, helpful to the council. Uh, so, so it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that helps. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, and yeah, really, I think my, uh, in, in the, the counts, the finance committee meets, uh, is it Tuesday, Thursday? Just for this very brief period of time. We usually okay. meet on Tuesday in the uh, afternoon at 2.30. The uh, twice a week meeting period is only during, there's the one month lapse. So the, the, the big, di another difference between former form of government in the current is uh, the town manager would give the budget to the finance committee um, at the end of January and it didn't need to get to town meeting until um, April. Now under the current form of government, uh, and this is true of all cities, uh, this is not unique to us, um, there's a much narrower scope of time. So under normal circumstances, the uh, manager would have given us the budget on May 1st, mm -hmm. and we would have had 30 days to um, give a, um, an analysis back and make recommendations to the council so that the council could act and complete the budget um, before the end of uh, the fiscal year that was yesterday. Yeah. Uh, we created a unique process this year, which we're permitted to do, but we don't anticipate that that will necessarily happen again. Uh, it's more likely that in future years, we will be back to the old schedule so that twice a uh, week meeting process will probably fall back to the month um, of May and not be happening uh, in June and July as it is this year. Okay. Great. Well, that's uh, very helpful. That's all the really questions I, I have. Okay. So. Um, Good, Joe. Thank you. Um, the plan is for us to deliberate later uh, in this meeting and uh, hopefully we'll come to a decision. So I should be getting back to you um, uh, later today or certainly within the next 24 hours, um, okay. let you know uh, what the committee has decided. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, Joe, again, on behalf of the committee, um, thank you very much for putting yourself forward and uh, for making yourself available for this interview. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you all for your time. Uh, Have a great day. Good to see you, Lynn. Take yep. care. Great. All right. Bye. All right. Um, Jane Scheffler is in the attendees uh, column. So, um, well, she was maybe. She, oh, yeah, she still is. So, um, I'm I'm bringing her in. That's no great. Um, are we ready? We don't. Uh, everyone ready to move on, or do you want to catch your breath? I think we're okay. All right. Thank you, Athena. If you'd bring her in. Um, Hello, Jane. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for 
making yourself available. Um, I want to introduce the committee to you uh, and just very briefly explain the format. Um, okay. You may, you may have met some of these folks, maybe not. Uh, Lynn Griesemer is the town council president, member of the committee. Um, Mandy Jo Haneke is the council vice president. And um, Andy Steinberg is chair of finance. And uh, Pat DeAngelis is uh, uh, vice chair of this committee. Um, and uh, I want to welcome you. And we can see you and we can hear you and that's important. Um, the way it works is that I'm going to have each of my colleagues ask you a question. Um, they also have a follow-up question if they wish. Um, at the end of that, I'm going to turn it to you. And if you have any questions uh, for the committee, particularly about finance and, and that uh, job, um, it's your opportunity to ask us some questions. We hope it will take about 15 minutes or so. We're a little bit behind schedule, but not badly. So, uh, we'll take as much time as we need. Um, so if I can find my list here, um, actually it's Mandy that um, I would like uh, to begin the questions. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna switch it around a little bit since I'm the first one to ask. And I'd like you to, um, you know, describe more your experience with budgets. I know your statement of interest indicated you love budgets um, and, and stuff. And even though I'm not on finance, I, I agree with you. I find them fascinating. So if you could talk a little bit more about your experience with them, your your degrees, you had a degree you said in public administration and all, and, and what maybe you've used that for, or what that experience, um, how that's translated into something that, that might, um, and give us an idea of what you would contribute to the finance committee um, if you were on it. Sure. So um, I, have, I actually have two master's degrees. I have one in nonprofit management and one in public administration. Um, and I have an extensive background in nonprofit leadership, working both in a healthcare organization and then in an arts organization. Um, and so I've gotten used to, on the nonprofit side of things, um, trying to maximize the minimum amount of resources and get really creative with um, how do you make the most impact while, while reserving your resources for a rainy day? Um, and a lot of that has come from, um, a lot of the experience I have with budgets are budget creation and then budget management. And that includes managing large grants um, and, uh, and with that also public funding. So there's, different levels of responsibility that you have to both granting organizations and also the government. So understanding kind of the nuances of that and um, fiscal transparency. Um, I also just think budgets are such a fascinating way to see the story of what's valued in a community and in an organization. Like where are you pouring your resources and how are you how are you making those work for you? And so that's that's one of the things I just love about budgets is they they really tell you something that you aren't gonna learn otherwise. Um, as far as my degree in public administration, what um, probably the most helpful thing that that's done for me of late is I'm on the um, Amherst Historical Commission. And so um, it's been really fun for me to use that background to participate in local government. Um, one of the things we're working on right now in the Historical Commission is um, revamping the demolition delay bylaws so that um, they're clear and um, understandable to everyone who needs to access them. Um, and so that's been a really fun way to sort of marry my experience with both public administration and nonprofit management um, and a way to sort of quench my urge for civic engagement. Good. Andy. So the question that I've been asking everybody is, uh, and I'll just phrase it a little bit different here, but uh, the Finance Committee is unique in the Charter because it's the one committee that uh, the charter gives the council the ability to add a resident members to that council committee. Uh, what do you th uh, think are reasons why um, it's good to have that opportunity 
for this particular committee? And how do you envision taking advantage of that if you're uh, chosen as the person to fulfill that role? Sure, so I think um, there's a couple of different ways you can look at it. One I think is um, if you look at it from a community buy-in perspective, I think when you have a member of the community who participates um, actively in the finance committee, then if there are other people in the community who don't necessarily agree with something that happens in the budget or the way something is funded, you have a voice in the community to say, well, look, but if we talk about all these other things and everything that's important to us, um, really we had the best interest of everybody at heart when we, when we made this decision. And I think um, that that can go a long way with people, especially uh, one of the things I really love about Amherst and I've really noticed in the two years we've lived here is that um, people are very engaged in what happens in their community here and they really want an active voice. And I think um, that knowing that there's a resident member of a committee sort of helps other people feel like they have a voice. It's, a, it's a, basically like a liaison um, in some regards. And I think it's also helpful because um, if there are concerns that other residents have, they feel like they have someone that they can go to to express that. And that it's a, it's a bridge way. I think it just opens a different line of communication and maybe makes things feel slightly more accessible for people. Um, and I think it's just a good way to continue to keep the community engaged. Good. Pat. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to uh, use your question a bit, Mandy Jo, your original one. Um, we are in a unique situation in terms of COVID and its impact on all municipal finances, state finances. And I, so we have a great deal of budget uncertainties. What, how do you think you will approach or would you consider approaching to look at capital projects, to looking at the day-to-day use of spending in town. Um. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is where some of my nonprofit experience comes in. I worked at Planned Parenthood for almost 10 years. Um, and um, yeah, so basically our budget was under threat constantly. Um, and then I went to work for a, a community music school, um, managing a music therapy program which no one understood what it was or why it had value. And so a lot of what it is, is you, you have to prioritize. Um, and there's, especially if you're dealing with capital projects, like you can't not rebuild, say a bridge because someone really wants this playground to be rebuilt or something like you have to know where the priorities are as far as safety. Um, and then, um, what the best allocation of resources is. I think um, what with the fact that we have things like the historical commission and the um, and other committees that we have throughout the town, we have the ability to take care of uh, volunteer workforce to help with some uh, various day to day things. That um, if we get really creative we've got an engaged enough community that there are ways that we can save some fiscal resources through um, taking advantage of that engaged citizenship to try and get people to help us with things. Um, and that way you can, you can, because you don't want to cut corners. It's about, it's about trying to be thoughtful with the allocation of resources and ensuring that you put the public safety and the needs of the community above what might look pretty on a brochure, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. Um, hi, Jane. Um, so I know this comes a little bit later in it, but um, you mentioned that you work for Planned Parenthood and also the Community Music School. Um, by the way, I do understand the relationship of music therapy. My son has been uh, engaged with the um, Berkshire Hills Music Academy for many years now. And so 
which is an absolute and complete core. So, and what, so what brought you to Amherst? Uh, my husband is a professor at the Eisenberg School of Management. So we moved after he finished his PhD in Minnesota uh, for him to take the job here. Great. And you are obviously uh, studying our town and shown some of that in your answers. Um, are there other specific things about your background you think we should know that would be particularly important for this committee? Um, that, that weirdly, it feels like a tough question. <laughs> Listen, meant that way. Um, I, well, it's one of those questions that should be easy, but it's kind of hard to answer. Um, I don't, I think, so the, probably the easiest way to explain it is, um, my advisor in graduate school when I was finishing up my master's in nonprofit management was the former mayor of St. Paul. And he was also, um, key in getting the VISTA program started, um, the AmeriCorps VISTA program. And so he really hammered it into our, our heads that um, engaged in active citizenship is the best way to participate in democracy in some ways. And so I think um, I, hadn't, I hadn't really thought about how fulfilling getting involved at the local level could be until I had the opportunity to learn from him. Um, so he'd been on the city council for a long time in St. Paul and then he became the mayor. Um, and he still stays really involved with um, local and national politics. And so it's, it was seeing his passion for it really invigorated in me um, and understanding of how fulfilling it can be to really participate in your community. And when we moved to Amherst two years ago, um, and I started to get to know the area, I got really excited about the reality that this is a community that you really can participate in. Um, and so I guess, you know, I would love to be on your committee, but if it doesn't work, whatever is best for Amherst is what's best for me. Um, and I also think that in some regards, um, I tend to be a lot younger than the other people that I see that are engaged at this level. And I think that there's some benefit to that um, just because I uh, have a lot of energy and a lot of passion for it. Um, and uh, really I'm just excited about living in Amherst and being a part of the community and being able to participate in any way that I can. Thank you. Follow-up questions from any of my colleagues. A second question for Jane. Okay. Seeing none, Jane, this is your chance to um, stump the committee. Um, we've got a couple of finance committee members here. They think they're pretty bright. But you know, we'll see. we're going to put them to the test. But anyway, questions you have for the committee about this this job, this task, anything uh, is your chance to ask if you wish. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think. The information that you sent over with the um, outline of what you were interested in for the statement of interest was pretty thorough in giving me an understanding of some of the work that you guys do. Um, it's it sounds like you guys meet monthly, except for you meet bi-monthly when you're, or twice a month when you're doing the actual budget, is that correct? Andy, if you want to address it, he has the most. Uh, actually, it's a little bit more aggressive scheduling than that. Uh, we've generally been uh, meeting uh, every other week, though sometimes we will skip meetings uh, and just meet monthly. But um, that's sort of the minimum. During the um, active period, which is one month out of the year, uh, when the budget is actively under consideration, then we're meeting actually twice a week because we're on a very aggressive schedule. What happens is that the town manager submits a budget for uh, the council to consider. And um, under a normal um, year, uh, that is on May 1st, and then uh, it's referred to the Finance Committee. And the Finance Committee has 30 days to review the budget and uh, make its recommendation back to the council. 
often in the council has um, a period that's really only a matter of weeks after that to make a final decision on the budget. The council has the ability to uh, not fund sections of the budget that are recommended. It cannot add to the budget. Um, the other, um, so that that process is uh, when it's particularly difficult and we actually are meeting twice a week. Uh, this year, because of the abnormal situation due to the COVID situation, we postponed the budget process and we're in that twice a week mode right now. Uh, the uh, other thing that we then do during the course of the year is to try and use the opportunity to provide guidance to the manager as far as and through the council um, on giving some guidelines as to what we're looking for in priorities. Um, and that's what uh, the kind of work that is happening during the remainder of the year. Um, and then I guess just thinking of putting my budgeting hat on, um, do you guys get monthly reports on how the spending is going for the town? Like, do you get regular updates that you're able to evaluate to see if the budget's starting to go wonky in one area or another, or? We get quarterly reports from quarterly. the uh, finance staff on how um, they're doing both on the revenue side and the expense side um, against the budget as it has been adopted. And this is kind of an in the weeds question, but now I'm excited to ask it. So when you get those quarterly reports, do you feel like if there's adjustments that need to be made, do you feel like there's opportunity to make those adjustments by the time you get them? Or is it so pretty well set in stone and you just have to wait and see what happens? Um, good question. We don't really have too much opportunity to make adjustments, but we, um, and I think we don't usually feel a need to, because uh, normally, if there are variations from a budget against uh, what was projected, uh, they're explained well. And uh, we have a really good management staff that is thinking it through and is explaining the adjustments that they are making. Uh, and that's very helpful for us to be engaged in that level and uh, those reports are also submitted to the council as a whole, um, though we usually offer some comments for the council to consider. Uh, I think that Lynn has a supplemental. Yeah, sure. yeah I, um, I think what uh, everything Andy has said is absolutely correct. However, I think this is a year in which we may have to um, exercise a much more diligent oversight. We're, we are budgeting into a, a vast unknown mm -hmm. thing at, for our schools, as well as the library and general government. And the upshot is that we have already made a commitment that to some extent, we will cover shortfalls from the state using reserves. But I, am, I know from myself, and at least a couple of counselors, there is a desire not to um, go through those reserves very fast. So that is going to mean uh, a constant dialogue uh, with the town manager and our fiscal, our outstanding fiscal staff as well uh, to kind of keep a check on what that budget really looks like this year. It's, it's, a, it's unusual, it's just, Leave it at that. Sure, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I, that was kind of what I was thinking is putting my nonprofit hat on thinking about when you're 
budgeting for a grant and you're not 100% sure you're going to get it and then all of a sudden you're, you've got $50,000 less for your $300,000 budget than you thought you were going to have to have and um, having to make some pretty quick decisions in order to try and save save programming or save other things that are important to you. So that's kind of what I was wondering, especially with this lovely catastrophe that is COVID we're all dealing with. Jane, thank you. Those are excellent questions. Um, what our plan is now is that we will, uh, at the end of these interviews, we plan to deliberate as a body today and hopefully make a decision today. And if that does happen, I will be in touch with you either later today or within 24 hours okay. um, with the decision of the committee. Um, on behalf of the committee, I want to express our, again, our gratitude for you making yourself available to us today. Um, and secondly, obviously for stepping forward. Um, it, it, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Right. Take care, Jane. Thank you so much. Right, we have one final uh, candidate um, that I believe is known to everyone. Um, Meredith. Uh, I'm going to take it just a minute or two break. Sure. Yeah, okay. I need one too. All right, please go ahead. Um, so we're going to pause for two minutes. And um, when we come back, we will turn to our final interview. And Mary Lou, thank you for being patient. We're a little behind schedule, not too much, but. Mary Lou doesn't have her mic on yet. I'm wondering if she's having a connection issue. I'm gonna check in with her. Okay, thank you. Mary Lou does not have video capacity, so she will be able to, uh, hope, assuming everything works, she will be able to uh, talk to us and hear us. Uh, she'll use her phone, but um, I think she's able to see us on her com computer, but we will not be able to see her. This is That's how she joins the finance committee. Right. You, the fin yeah, finance members know this all well, right? So for those who don't, that's what we're going to uh, have with Mary Lou. I'm actually going to uh, make an announcement uh, to the public that's in attendance. Um, according to my screen, we have eight attendees. Um, since this is a regular meeting of GOL, we do have a provision for public comment. Public comment, however, will not come till at the end or near the end of this meeting, um, which will be in about an hour, give or take. Um, also, I see four hands raised. Um, and I would like to point out to those people that um, when we do come to public comment, I will ask you to raise your hand. Um, having your hand raised at this point actually is a sign to me that you are not uh, following our simple guidelines. Um, public comment comes at the end of the meeting in this uh, committee. And at that point, I will ask people who are present in the public to raise their hands. So um, if you wish to speak um, as a member of the public, you should lower your hand at this point. Um, thank you. And if your hand stays raised, there will be consequences. George, I'm, I'm working on connecting Mary Lee right now. Hang on. Okay, thank you very much.
All right, she should be calling in just a moment. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Mary Lou, loud and clear. Oh, good. Um, on behalf of the committee, I want to thank you for taking the time to make yourself available. And um, I believe you you know all the members of the committee, but and I think actually you can see us. Is that correct? Do you have a-, a Yes, a I can. Okay, so you can see all our smiling faces. And right, think, and all the rooms you're sitting in. <laughs> well, yeah, I think everyone is actually in a room. Well, Mandy, what about, I never know with Mandy. She's, she's in town hall. She's in town hall. Well, I think, <laughs> are you? I am not. That is just a fake background. I'm in my home. <laughs> That's right. You've been also standing in front of town hall. Yes. Exactly on the beach. <laughs> on occasion. I'm in my home. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> so Mary Lou, this, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to have each of the committee members uh, ask you a question. They're entitled to a follow-up question if they wish. Um, and uh, once that is done, uh, I'm going to turn to you. And if you have any questions for the committee, um, you are, have a moment or two, you're free to ask those. Um, so that's a pretty simple format. And uh, we're going to begin this round of the uh, questions with Andy, actually. Uh, Andy Steinberg will have the first question. Hi, Mary Lou. Hi, Andy. Um, so uh, I'm going to ask a question a little differently than I've asked for other candidates because of your experience. I want to actually hear what your thoughts are on something, and that is the council um, has a unique opportunity because of the charter. The charter singled out the finance committee as the one council committee that uh, the council had the opportunity to include resident members um, is on the committee and obviously they must have had a vision for doing that. Uh, the question for you is, um, having been in that role for a year, do you think that um, we've been successful in um, meeting the vision and using the um, resident members effectively and what could we do differently? Well, I'm only speaking for myself on this. Um, I think we've been uh, welcomed uh, and you've listened you know, carefully to what we've had to say and you've taken that into consideration as you've made your decisions. You know, I'm very comfortable with that. Um, we kind of joke, can we vote to uh, adjourn, <laughs> which we can't even do. But, uh, but no, I, I think... Um, at least this present committee is is very open to what we have to say and and recognizes uh, our input so because of the charter i don't know how you could change that uh, we are non-voting um, but every committee will be different this committee is is wonderful about listening to everything we have to say and recognizing us so i i'm happy with that but you can't write that into a charter in terms of how people receive uh, non-resident voters or resident non-voters. <laughs> but it's hard to keep from, right. Um, Andy, a follow-up or a second question? No, that's it. Okay. okay. Um, Pat. Uh, Mary Lou, I've been looking over your experience in town government and on school committee and uh, on the finance committee, uh, and I, I'm interested in some time or what happens when you 
uh, or the group you're working with has made a mistake, how do you utilize um, and sort of regroup um, in a situation like that? How do you make mistakes value or failures valuable? Well, one would think you'd evaluate what you did, how you did it, and how you could do it differently on areas where we've taken votes, um, we have moved to reconsider and then, you know, bring the new information into the discussion. But I think being on any of these committees, it's, a, it's an ongoing process. You, you see how you can do things better um, and you improve. You're going to make mistakes. First time around on many things, there are things you could do better. Hopefully you don't make, you know, dramatic mistakes, but, but as you say, you learn from that. But again, uh, my experience has been if you make a major mistake on a vote, um, you can go back and reconsider and bring in new information. I'm not sure if that answers your question. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, then. Oh, I'm actually unmuted. Uh, so in, in full disclosure, Mary Lou and I first met when she in fact was Dean at Holyoke Community College. And we worked together to help Russian immigrants who were educated as nurses to pass the nursing exam in English. Am I correct? Uh, uh, you know what, Lynn, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Uh, that, but we, but there were Russian students, yes. Yeah. So anyway, um, Mary Lou, you've brought enormous amounts of experience to the finance committee, and now you've had the experience to uh, be on the finance committee, both with town meeting and with the town council. And I think it would be useful for me, at least, to hear you reflect on the difference of what you see as the role of those two committees or the, at our moment in history? Well, the, uh, there were more people obviously looking at the budget and as was pointed out before, they, those members did not see or get hard copy of either of the, 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 the library, the schools or the town so that those finance committee reports had to be uh, fairly um, extensive. This um, finance, this council, I think should see all the, the budgets in their entirety. And I, I gather from a, a meeting that they have seen the regional budget and they've seen the, they have now seen the town budget and the library budget. And to me, what was lacking is they didn't see the complete version of the school budget in order to make um, decisions. I think that the um, report now of the finance committee, the council finance committee, that report to them and their recommendations on these three budgets doesn't need to be as long as the finance committee report. It doesn't have to contain um, as much information, but it does need some, obviously. Um, I, I'm not sure, uh, you know, you have 13 members on the council. If they all do their work, um, that will be, be fine. I think the, the thing that to me is um, an issue is how, how closely all these meetings are to get the information from the various departments, but that's in the charter and you can't change that. Um, so there has to be a way that this finance committee can get out a recommendation to the whole council in that short a period of time. And as I was you know, thinking about it yesterday, one of the things I think will be to think about a template that you can use every year 
and just insert the updated numbers and any additional information so that every year you don't have to be reinventing um, this report or, or the a template for it. I think that would help uh, just because it's for the counselors themselves. It's a lot of work in that short period of time in addition to all the other work. I've watched your meetings. You are overwhelmed with, with work. So there needs to be a way to help the finance committee um, make the job somewhat easier, but yet get the information out to the counselors in time uh, for their vote, uh, which is due obviously this year a little later. Does that answer your question? Uh, I would just want to say, as usual, you've offered an additional insight uh, in terms of what our job is, and I appreciate that very much. Okay. Thank you. Mandy Jo? Thank you. Um, and Mary Lou, thank you for all of your service for the town for however many years it's been. It's been a while, and I know that takes a lot of dedication. Um, and I, I want to go to some of that service um, because I know you've been involved for a while. Um, this budget year and the next couple are going to be like budget years we've never seen before because this is not an ordinary downturn, economic downturn, where we can, in some sense, rely on past practices because we don't know what's going to happen. Um, and as we've seen this year with one month budgets the how I'm not sure when the last time we even had to do one was if ever um, as a town so we still don't know state guidelines uh, what that's going to be so I want to I'm interested in hearing what your approach to guidelines for the council guidelines for the manager the balancing of operating and capital needs and the funding of that and the use of reserves is um, given how much uncertainty we have around everything. Uh, if you could talk about how you would approach that in the committee, that would be fantastic. That's a good question. Um, I think the town has always been conservative in uh, its estimates. We do get the um, financial information from the manager early on, what they see. Uh, obviously, we did not see COVID coming. Um, but those figures are always conservative, so we've been fortunate. Um, we did have that downturn in 2008, as you, as you, or yes, as you've heard. And I think at that point, we, we wanted to build up reserves so that when something like this happened, you could fall back on them. Um, but it takes everybody, <clears throat> all the departments in town and in the schools and in the library to be willing to reduce their budgets and find efficiencies where, where you can reduce. Um, going forward, uh, I, I think the plan is a good one. We'll see in the fall what happens if we can use some capital or if we'll need some reserves. But those things are always unpredictable. I think the best thing to do is be conservative with your projections and, and have reserves that you can use and not overspend them. One of the things the old finance committee came up with, and Andy knows, is that if you're going to introduce a new program, it has to you have to show how in the long run that's going to save money. And one of the, the areas we gave additional money to was the schools when they closed Mark's Meadow because we knew in the long run that would be a savings, although that particular year the budget exceeded the guidelines. So those are things I think you have to have people, especially your staff in town hall, and, and they are wonderful. Um, they're very good at projecting, um, and so uh, I, I count on them for, you know, solid information. But then the committee has to be willing to make some hard choices and to make some tough recommendations. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Follow-up questions or a second question from any members of the committee? Seeing none, Mary Lou, this is your opportunity. If you wish to ask questions of the committee and particularly of the finance committee and its 
which you know obviously very well, but still, if you have any questions, uh, it's your opportunity to ask. Uh, I'd like to go back to what Pat had asked me. Would you repeat that? Because I had a fleeting thought <laughs> as part of my answer, but it was after you, after I went on to someone else. <clears throat> you remember your question, Pat? Oh, she's muted out. Pat uses sign language a great deal. Um. <laughs> Um, I apologize for not unmuting myself. I got distracted by my phone and on a message that I can deal with later. Um, I just want, I, if you would repeat your question. I had, <clears throat> I had a thought later and then I've forgotten it. Well, basically I'm interested in how you use mistakes to, to uh, move forward, whether it's a, a personal mistake around budgeting or um, or a town mistake around budgeting, maintenance, things like yeah. that. No, it w wasn't on that line. I'm sorry. I <clears throat> something I thought of later, and now it's it's gone. Okay. I've been uh, working on some other things. Any other questions you may have? Um, no, I think you know. I pretty much know the yes. the function of the the committee yeah. and how it's structured. Um, I do, I guess I would, I would put this out there because I, I think that there are uh, the finance committee and the planning board, although I'm told the planning board, uh, it's a three year term. Is that correct? Uh, planning board. Yeah. Okay. But I think the finance committee is equally as challenging mm -hmm. to, um, to, to learn about to to learn how it all functions and you know where we get where we get our information in terms of revenues and how you come up with um, some of your projections and so forth and I think a two-year term for for the uh, council members I realize it's only because you have two-year terms but I don't think or it's as, are you a limited to one-year term and reappointment it's See, I, I, I just don't think you build up the knowledge that you need with the, with the uh, financials of the town. You're just learning all of these pieces, and then you can choose to go off. And, th and that's fine if you choose to go off. But, if, but let's say you get someone on there who, dis who decides you're going to go off and you don't want to, and you've done a good job. I think, I, I think two-year terms make a lot of sense. Um, and to some degree, even a three-year term, because many of you will run for re-election, hopefully. Um, so it's, I don't know, you can change the charter. I guess that's the issue. Is that true? Well, the charter can be changed, yes, but it's, it's a, cumber, a very cumbersome and, and lengthy process. Oh. And Manny could speak to that <laughs> at great length. <laughs> uh, so there can't be just a, an understanding that you will be appointed for two years, regardless of what the charter says. But anyway, that, that, that's a real concern I have because uh, the finances of the town are extremely important, as you know, and you, we can do a good job or we can do a poor job. So people need to be on there uh, from the council who have, who have experience. Very good. So that's my little lecture. Okay, thank you. Um, Mary Lou, on behalf of the committee, I want to thank you very much for making yourself available to us today. Um, we, our plan is to deliberate. Um, after maybe a few minute break, we'll decide that in a second, but our plan is to deliberate together this afternoon. And then uh, hopefully I can get back to all the candidates later today or tomorrow at the latest um, with the committee's decision. Okay, thank you. Thank you, all right. Okay. Take Bye care. now. Bye -bye. Well, committee members, we have uh, accomplished uh, two goals. Um, one, we have completed our interviews, not completely on time, but fairly close. Um, and secondly, we have only one attendee at the moment, <laughs> and the name is quite familiar. So um, uh, I think we need to uh, make a decision. Can we move 
public comment up to before deliberation right now? We yeah. certainly could. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking about that. A window? <laughs> I have a window and uh, yeah. all the names that I was worried about have all disappeared. Uh, all the people had their hands up for the last hour have all disappeared. Um, so I'm disturbed by this, but I guess CRC has had this experience and other committees had this experience. Um, and I guess we just have to make do. Um, so why don't I take a moment and if there is anyone present in the public who wishes to make a comment, we do have one attendee. Um, if that uh, person wishes to make a comment, this is their opportunity to raise their hand and they will be recognized and um, their comment will be taken by the committee. So I'm going to take a look for a moment. Um, I see no hands raised. Um, I do have one member of the, of the public present, but uh, so that uh, takes care of public comment for today's meeting. I assume, uh, yes, I assume we're going to go straight to deliberation. Uh, does anyone need a break? Okay. Um, I feel like I want to clear my head, but. <laughs> is this going to be ranked choice voting or is it going to be a majority rule? I have no, I have no idea. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if we can increase the number of members to this uh, body by by four. <laughs> um, I, I thought it was a very impressive group. Um, uh, many different skills, many different uh, backgrounds, uh, uh, some youth, which was lovely to see. Yes. A, a lot of experience, which is lovely to see. Um, and uh, certainly people who are new to our community, uh, two uh, individuals who bring um, a fresh perspective and are eager to serve. I, I'm impressed by the fact that all four are very eager to serve our community, which is what makes, I think, our job so difficult because um, that kind of enthusiasm and desire to serve is, is precious and we can only choose one. Um, so I, I'm not looking forward to that, uh, but that's what we have to do. Um, so, we do have some selection guidance um, that we probably should have. Um, I have it up on my screen, but I'm totally incapable of putting it up on your screens. Um, so I can certainly read it at the appropriate moments or hopefully some of you have it available to you, but we probably should have it uh, available to us and it should have been in your packet, sorry, um, from our process. Um, I'm just going to read it for a moment if people want to um, either take notes or just take a moment and dig it up themselves. Um, selection of resident members shall be based on relevant experience, skills, and policy knowledge with an emphasis on municipal and public finance. Qualifications might include experience serving on public finance or audit committee, training or expertise in economics, finance, policy, or comparable areas or experience or interest in municipal finance or consistently available for meetings, particularly during budgeting season, which is normally May and June. And we have two uh, paragraphs that follow upon that. Ideally, resident members should represent a mix of experience, skills and perspectives, including knowledge of the world beyond Amherst. In addition, the chair of GOL or designee shall solicit from the chair of finance input as to whether there's any preferred knowledge and or experience that the committee requires. Term limits, we've talked about this. Um, and so we have the language in front of us. Um, where do you wish to begin? All these candidates certainly meet many, if not all of these criteria. No. Um, anything that stood out to you in particular, anything that um, you feel would make any one individual a better fit at this time? I mean, obviously one thing that's of consideration is that this is a very unusual time we're dealing with um, uh, an extraordinary crisis. Um, so that might be an argument for um, going with someone with more experience that in a normal time, I would certainly be excited about new faces, new energy, 
um, that would really um, be something I would be looking to. Um, but this is a very unusual time. And is this the time for someone who doesn't have a lot of experience either with um, municipal government, financial background, town matters, et cetera? Um, is this a good time to bring them into the mix? That's one thought I have, just the, the situation we're in at the moment. Um, Lynn, please. So, I'm not sure I'm on mute. Um, I mean, you in Georgia, in many ways, you you partially said it. Right now, we have before us two people who have experience that is during a time similar to what we're going through. And at the same time, we have one candidate who brings a totally fresh look at how we think about things and also brings youth. And there is... It 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 I, it was an absolutely excellent group. I wish for all committees we had this kind of choice. Yeah. Um, but I I really want to make sure that we consider what you're saying about that. Reflect on the fact that uh, at least one member on the finance committee has been through the bush through the war, <laughs> and um, at the same time. Um, there is nothing like experience. There is also nothing like a new look. Mm -hmm. Could we clone two of them? Yeah, right. <laughs> them into one being. All right. Mandy Jo has her hand up. Mandy Jo, please. Yeah, I I guess every time I go through this and I get the backgrounds of the individuals that you know put themselves out there for whatever committee it is, I am always so impressed by what our town has to offer and yeah i it makes a decision and a choice extremely difficult and you know it makes it hard to pick one over another or you know lean towards one because i think you know any one of these candidates would bring something necessary to this committee. Um, you know, I, I'm looking at what our selection guidance is and, you know, mix of experiences, skills, perspective, looking at what we've got already on our committee. Um, I do, you know, my, my question to the candidates in general sort of gave away where I was looking, which is, you know, I think we need people who have dealt with um, some sort of budget cuts, budget uncertainties um, in the past and bring an experience like that to this committee because we are in something we've never faced before. Um, although there are similarities to the 08, 09 meltdown. Um, I think there's some similarities, but there's a huge amount of differences too um, that we just don't know what things are going to look like, um, you know, and so I, I, I don't know what to do with that um, because I think at least two, if not three of the candidates have that type of experience and talked about that type of experience, you know, in various ways, not always public administration, mm -hmm. um, you know, so you know, I, I don't even know who I'm leaning towards right now. <laughs> I understand. Andy, you have your hand up. Yeah, no, I have sort of the same reaction that I think the rest of you have because uh, we have two candidates who have ex um, a large amount of experience in municipal finance and sort of the um, things that are unique about unis municipal finance. Um, and two people who uh, have kids so closer association with schools and um, are consumers of services in a different way. And it's a question that I think I'd be, I'm going to be interested in what Pat's observations are as a newer member to the Finance Committee about 
what it is that she would like to have in somebody um, uh, in the resident positions and uh, from from that perspective uh, the uh, comment that came from um, Jane as uh, her background in nonprofit management the, the, you know I reflected back as she said that on uh, my experience coming from the director of the nonprofit into the finance committee when I was which was my first real role other than town meeting and the one thing that I spent a lot of time having to learn was that there are differences between nonprofit management and government management, um, a lot having to do with law, but also how um, the politics of taxation and the fact that you're asking people to pay uh, taxation in order to receive services and you have the power to do that. Uh, those are differences that uh, it took me, um, I realized were there, but then to learn it, it was not um, a short learning piece, which was what Mary Lou was getting at with her final comment. There's no good answer to Mary Lou's question because um, I think Oka had a good discussion about that issue when it came up before Oka. Um, and uh, so they made the decision they made, and I'm not going wanting to go back and revisit that decision. George, why don't you say something? Well, I actually have said a number of things already. Um, I mentioned I think that we're in a time of crisis, and and so the question, as Mandy's echoed, is: Do you want somebody who's kind of been through the ringer? That would seem to be a reasonable um, thought that, you know, at this time, uh, assuming a level, I mean, the other thing is expertise or knowledge. I think we do, given the fact that council members uh, come from very different backgrounds and many do not have a strong finance background, uh, quite honestly. Um, I think there is the sense that a, a very important criteria would be someone who has a good financial sense someone who can read budgets and analyze budgets and is comfortable with that sort of thing would seem to me to be a very strong uh, uh, criteria factor. Um, secondly, experience, uh, especially dealing with crises. Um, I don't know if that's as important, but I guess the, the biggest thing is just whoever gets this position shouldn't need to need uh, uh, three months or six months to get used to reading these, these documents and used to dealing with budget type issues. Um, in some sense, all these candidates um, fit that bill, I think, um, in terms of financial knowledge expertise outside of Amherst. Um, I don't know how important that is right now, um, but that's a factor. One thing that came to my mind listening was that one of the candidates clearly picked up on the idea of a member of this committee uh, being someone that would uh, that people could come to in the larger community that, you know, that they would be a kind of a, a voice or a way of communicating to people who have questions about the budget or priorities and so on. Um, I don't know how important that is, that, that one of these three resident members be someone who's well tied into the community or is tied into a community that, that uh, you know, we would like to be more apprised of what the financial issues are. Um, that's a factor. Is that as important as, as financial expertise? Is that as important as someone who's been through the ringer, who's had to deal with crises, which is where we're at right now? Um, another issue, uh, I guess I'll throw out there, is, is term limits. So we obviously have a candidate who has served for uh, a term and our guidelines state that there's a preference for a second term. Um, how do we deal with that? Um, is that is considered uh, the most important factor? Um, I, I, <laughs> I One of the things, um, yep. as a, um, a new member on finance, you know, um, I feel um, I bring certain information, you know, certain skills around looking at budgets and stuff. And um, 
but what I'm interested in is somebody who really um, listens and is flexible. Um, I think that the potential exists for that in each of the candidates, but I, so I guess I, I'm leaning very specifically to two people, one of them more than the other. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how this works. Can I say names or, you know? Yeah, I think we're going to have to. Uh, I'm leaning towards Bernie uh, because okay. of the, okay. I'm leaning towards Bernie Kubiak because of the experience he brings uh, in a wide range of municipal situations, not profit situations. And I have a great deal of loyalty to Mary Lou um, mm -hmm. for many reasons, but I'm also feeling like um, the, her experience while broad is also more focused on schools. And I'd like to see that opened up a little bit. I'm also interested in Jane because she brings youth and she bring, but I feel um, similarly to you that right now experience might be better. I think with Bernie, his experience wouldn't blind him. Um, I know that my own experiences can blind me to seeing other opportunities, issues, um, or being creative about certain things. And I think that, I think, um, I think he has the ability to really rethink his positions um, and open them up. Um, I, I think that's an important aspect of his, of his uh, experience. I don't know. So okay. that's who I'm leaning towards. Okay. Would someone else like to um, give us a sense of at the moment, or do they want to continue discussion in terms of broader criteria and so on, um, where they are leaning at the moment? Should we jump in or wait, George? Uh, I think people should all be unmuted at this point. Okay. And we should just, just scream um, uh, whenever. But yes, I think you can just, I mean, I'm, I'm just jump in. OK. Um, I am, I've got two people I'm leaning towards. Yep. And you know, one of them is Bernie Kubiak. Uh, mostly for the same reasons Pat said, the huge broad throughout all, you know, the town, you know, former town administrators and the experience of managing a budget from that perspective, um, I think gives our finance committee um, something we don't have yet. Um, and that in this time of uncertainty, um, would be helpful and useful um, to sort of balance Paul's presentation of of that. Um, you know, as as Pat said, Mary Lou's experience is extensive, but it's much more focused. Um, so so that's why I lean towards Bernie over that. But I also lean towards Jane um, for um, you know she and both Joe bring sort of a new perspective that that Bernie and Mary Lou don't bring as much because they've been sort of in the trenches a lot longer. Um, and, and that appeals to me. Um, you know, I thought what she spoke about with her nonprofit budgeting experience is something that could be valuable in terms of questions being brought up during a finance committee meeting um, and just the perspective that she brings and how she would approach those issues might, you know, could, could be very valuable. Um, and then I go back to actually some the questions Andy was asking. Um, why did the Charter Commission put these positions in? Um, and, and it was so fascinating to hear what people thought. Um, um, and, and so it made me think, why do we bring these, the, why did we do this? And one of the reasons we did it was to be able to, one reason was to be able to um, make up for potential deficiencies in a council. 
um, because you could end up with a full 13 slate members who've never done municipal finance at all. And the, these three positions would then become potentially extremely important to bring in those Bernies and Mary Lou's and, and those who have been on it, or maybe even former counselors that counseled off the council, you know, cycled off the council, but still have that experience. But the other reason we did it was as a low, almost a low impact way um, and of, and impact's the wrong word, but a low cost sort of barrier, a low barrier entry into the world of the council. Um, for those who might think of running for council in the future as sort of a training ground for counselors. And yes, all of our other committees are also training grounds potentially for counselors. But this one in particular gives people who are as the residents um, a really inside look because they're working with the counselors and doing council business almost, even if they don't have a vote. And and I see Joe and Jane as as potentially serving that, you know, not that I put my hat on, oh, and they might run, but but as more likely to fill that potential role that the commission foresaw. Um, and and I just I just feel like between Joe and Jane, Jane is better suited at this point for the the other things the committee will be facing so that's why i'm having a hard decision between those yeah. two that's yeah. why i would favor those two yeah this is definitely not easy i think this no. is really challenging um either lynn or andy wish to uh weigh in at this moment with a kind of ranking or who they're leaning toward um, or what they think would be the most important criteria or characteristic or trait that you'd like to see. Um, we're really stuck. I mean, also to what degree should we think about who's currently serving as the resident members and how this third member would be a complement to them? Would they be uh, simply reduplicating what we already have um, so I think it's probably appropriate to think about current membership. Um, and this is where I would defer to my uh, finance committee colleagues, but um, is th how relevant is that? Um, so on the, the present membership um, of the people who are not up for term, one is a previous finance committee member, uh, but not for many years, and, and not and more recently, I believe, uh, not, um, you know, not like 15 years back. Uh, and the other is a gentleman who is new to us, though he's lived in Amherst a long time. Uh, he worked in the private sector. He has a fair amount of financial experience. And I think the thing that I have um, felt is that he comes with a different perspective. And I I've always felt differences of perspective on committees is absolutely critical. It's, it's people who ask questions in different ways, who challenge you to look at your values, who challenge you to look at your rationale. And, um, and so in that regard, I just think he has made that contribution uh, to um, having said all of that, you know, just yesterday as we were meeting, um, the experience that Andy and Mary Lou brought from the Finance Committee is helping us think about how we get the report done uh, this year. And also, I think Mary Lou, even today, would help me reinforce the fact that what I think helped the council last year through the budget was the fact that we had the introductions of all the departments. And so we all had backgrounds about schools, libraries, and the departments within town. So when it came to their budgets, we weren't in the dark. Because we haven't had a refresher course on any of that, 
and we never even had a full school budget presentation. It really places more responsibility on the town's finance committee, town council's finance committee, to make sure that we've done our job and we looked at that thoroughly. I only use that as an example of her answer to that one question provides insight that I frankly hadn't thought about in that way. So um, I am totally stuck. <laughs> the part of me that says, you know, Mary Lou has spent one solid year with us. Um, give her the second term. There's another part of me that says, I love bringing in fresh eyes and difference of experience, even though yes, nonprofit is not the same as municipal. It still has, um, it brings something. And so I'm just kind of flummoxed at this point. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, at the same time, I mean, Bernie basic has been a town administrator. Right. You know, he's dealt with one twelfth budgets. I mean, right, right. right you don't right, get right. that very often. And he served us already in the capacity of the transition to the new council. Uh, and I know, um, I know, uh, Joe, and, you know, I, I don't frankly know him as a finance committee member. I know him as a, um, finance committee liaison. Um, so. Well, I was impressed by Joe, um, only in the sense that for fresh perspective, new to Amherst, has kids in the schools, but still has strong ties to Amherst in terms of family, but also brings a broader financial uh, experience and background, which is a different perspective. Though it sounds like we have a resident member right now that at least fits that bill in terms of that broader financial experience. I, I think that's very valuable, somebody who has financial knowledge outside of just the immediate uh, domain of, of say a, a town or, or right municipality, but do we need two people like that? And that's again a question to the, the finance committee members. So maybe in the fact, I mean, Joe is at the top of my list um, and, and Bernie the second, um, but maybe Joe's would be, they're all great, but maybe Joe you know, in a sense, some sense that one of the resident members takes care of that right now, that kind of broader financial knowledge that I think is important. It's already covered. Um, well, look at Joe, and I attach him in some ways to uh, Sharon Pavanelli, who's one of the other current members, because they were members of the old finance committee, but relatively shorter term than some of the rest. Uh, certainly didn't have Bernie's level of experience on the committee. Uh, and, uh, but uh, Joe does bring that uh, back kids in schools, the consumer of services and therefore in a different level. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, some background on the finance committee, um, but it's certainly not the depth of experience we've talked about with Bernie, for example. I mean, Bernie, if you're looking for somebody who can uh, identify the tough questions to ask Paul, uh, who's in, is going to bring the ability to sort of zero in on that probably Bernie who's um, above and beyond the rest of us because he's been a town administrator. Uh, the, uh, you know, I can, I can come up with reasons to, to say that each one of them brings something unique to the table. Right. Of course. And that's what's so difficult about this, uh, you know, it's hard to uh, match Mary Lou's sense of experience uh, with finance committee and town government. Uh, sometimes I feel like uh, I'm the other person who's kind of in that position. I hate being the only person who's in that position. Mm. But I am there. Right, right. 
I think another factor in back of my mind, I guess I should state it. Um, uh, hopefully it won't offend anyone, but it seems like a, just a practical question. Um, how do we look um, to future candidates if someone who served for a year doesn't get renewed? Um, what's our rationale? What's our defense? Um, there is a preference for um, you know, uh, renewal. Um, and this is only a one-year term. Um, no. What, what? No, no. It would be a two-year term. No, this, the term that's going to be offered is a two-year term, but the candidate that's being replaced has gotcha. only served for one year. Okay. And so uh, you, uh, one could make the argument that, that's, that it's immaterial. It's just utterly immaterial. I don't think it is. Um, I wish it were, but I don't think it is. Um, how does that look um, first to the candidate, but also to the larger public that, you know, our stated guidelines um, say one thing, but, you know, we are free to do what we want to do. And again, we are in an unusual situation. I think if this were just an ordinary another year in the ordinary life of our town, um, it would probably be a no brainer. Um, but to what degree does the crisis situation um, trump what I think would normally be a serious consideration for someone who has served for one year and to all that I have heard, <laughs> served quite competently, um, speaks up. I guess the other thing that in the back of my mind, do all three resident members speak up? Um, and I'm, I've never attended, a, well, I've attended, I guess, one or two as a, a council member, but I don't have broad experience with your meetings. Um, I don't get the sense that any of the four candidates here would have any problem speaking up. Um, they don't seem like people who would just sit there and, and just, you know, they would definitely be a presence. Um, Mary Lou certainly is a presence. Uh, she's not, right? Um, I get the sense from all the other candidates we've heard from today, certainly Bernie, given his lifetime of, of work, uh, Joe seems like, and, and certainly Jane, don't strike me as people who uh, would just sit quietly. And that to me is important. They need to state their, they need to have the confidence in themselves and uh, to, to state their views. Um, so I've just put it out there. To what degree do people feel comfortable um, basically rejecting a candidate who's served one year and is now asking for a full two year term? And uh, on what grounds would you make that? Would it be on the grounds of, you know, say someone like Bernie? I don't know. Um, that's in the back of my mind. Yeah, I mean, you sort of get to a different question that I've also thought about, because yes, Mary Lou's only served one year term, but then she's probably of the people who are on the old finance committee who trans who applied she's the longest serving if you put the two finance committees together is that an appropriate consideration to make too um, when you start saying is it time to get sort of a turnover in, just in government itself mm -hmm. uh, which then gets me you know I have to reflect on that on the personal side too because I kind of feel like after two terms on the select board and all the years on the finance committee, maybe I'm term limited out of uh, existence soon in town government. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, pretend I didn't, I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Uh, the, the only defense I always had come up with in the end to that one is it's the voters who make that decision. But exactly. uh, that is uh, the decision. I also want to be very clear the council does not have a term limit policy. Right, that's right. It's right, but uh, but we do. Let's exactly. get into this question. If you're going to say um, that we we don't have the term, we're looking to give people a chance for a second year. Um, then, do you look at um, the prior finance committee, and that actually? then falls on others who are on this too, because we have several members who are former mem members of the old finance committee. Yeah, I mean, I, I was gonna mention something similar. We have limited, normally limited to three two-year terms, six years. If we go with 
the way Alyssa looks at things, um, not how many terms, but how many years. Um, and we're in a unique situation because if you count just from the council, no one can have more than one year, right? Um, but, but that's not necessarily why we as council appointed the resident members to this finance committee. We were looking at prior service on finance committees and everything. So I don't think it's appropriate to discount that and ignore that time as we talk about turnover, um, you know, and, and cycling in and out. Um, I, you know, so I, I respect that, but, you know, I've always had issues with this term limit section of our selection guidance. Um, mm -hmm because of these issues that we're facing right now. Um, and, you know, if we look at total of six years, I think we've, you know, I, I don't know what Mary Lou's timeline is, but I know she approaches that. Um, I don't know how much she approaches it, but, um, but then we go back to, you know, two of our other candidates, Bernie and Joe, do we consider simply because they had a gap, do they start their time over or don't they? Um, you know, and, and how, how would we look at that? Um, I do think, you know, if it, we wrote these guidelines to say preference is given, but that doesn't, that, that doesn't ignore any changing circumstances. Um, and, and, Three months ago, we came, you know, something has changed that, that I think we can't ignore the, the difference in financial conditions and financial uncertainties from the state, from the federal government, from our own, um, you know, our own budgets and, and enterprise funds and all of that. I don't think we can ignore the need for what that requires going forward and in a short period of time. So to what degree, and people should speak up or just interrupt, um, but we're, to what degree does Bernie's experience in administration, um, his background, in a sense, make him the favorite candidate precisely because we're in this crisis situation um, that would trump Mary Lou's broad experience um, with the town, with finance and in all kinds of other areas and with Trump, um, the obvious energy and talent of the two younger, relatively speaking, younger candidates who bring a fresh perspective, which we also value. Um, is that where we're somewhat painfully and reluctantly headed or do people feel that no, it's this, that's, I mean, given the makeup of the body at the moment, given the two other resident members, that it's a body that really cries out for a fresh perspective, a new way of looking at things, or is it a body that right now, and at least the next two years facing the clear economic challenges that we're going to be facing, it would be best served by someone who, as we, you know, we said before, has been through the wars and can ask difficult questions and has you know, a fair amount of experience uh, having to make difficult decisions on a financial level. Is, that seems to me to be the, the gist of it here. Um, maybe term limits is, is just for, for our purposes, given the situation, we're just not gonna consider it. it it's, in the best of all worlds, we'd certainly consider it, but right now what's most important, given what we're facing for the next year or two, is to put the three and put someone on this body, we only can put one at the moment, uh, in addition to the two that are there, that would best serve uh, the interests of the finance committee and ultimately the town. And who of these very fine four candidates would be the best suited for that in this situation, which is unusual and, and really um, pretty much unprecedented. Yeah. unprecedented. And getting to the unusual nature of the situation we're in, there was one answer to one question that uh, was enabled a candidate to come up with something unique for us to think about in how we manage finances in these difficult times. And it was when Bernie said, 
we should look at the fact that this is an opportune time for borrowing and maybe borrowing gives us an option to do something we aren't thinking about doing. And um, it, was a, it was such an intriguing statement. I was really tempted to ply him into a long discussion about it because was he thinking about um, the fact that we had to put off so much of our capital and that maybe we should address a number of the unmet capital needs by borrowing and um, could we uh, package a number of significant um, backlogged capital purchases and spread them into future years um, and be able to do them uh, and go ahead and meet those urgent capital needs. Was that what he was thinking? Or was there something else behind that statement? So that would have been the first one that I would have asked him. And then depending upon how he answered that one, I would have gotten into the question of um, if he was thinking about borrowing for operations, uh, whether you legally can do that and whether he's running into an arbitrage um, problem. And uh, I um, would have been able to have that conversation with him on that level. Uh, so that was an, just an intriguing element to the conversations that we had with these candidates. We do not have to make a decision today. Um, I, at the time when I set this meeting up, I thought we did. I'm not sure that that would be wise to put it off. I'm not sure that would make any difference. I would um, rather not put it off. <laughs> okay, I just want to make the point that we can, um, yeah, but I am leaning towards Pat's view. It's just, this is really, I mean, we're well over time and maybe we're just gonna have to keep talking until um, we've reached some consensus. I'd like us to reach a consensus if we can. Um, we could just have everybody rank their candidates, one, two, three, four, and then see who is the, uh, um, the one that seems to be, you know, like ranked choice voting. Basically, Pat, is what you suggested at the start. Um, and we can do that. And we may do that in the next few moments. Um, the other is to see if we can come to some consensus in terms of what we are looking for. Um, we've raised some really good points um, and it, what I'm hearing at the moment is that this is an unprecedented situation. And so we can't just view it as business as usual. Unfortunately, it's the very first time we've ever done this. So that makes it even more crazy. But at the bottom line is it is an unprecedented situation. And the sense I'm getting is that the decision we make should be guided not so much by precedent or term limits as vague or whatever they are, but by what we think would best serve the finance committee in this unprecedented time. And um, we have two candidates with very deep experience, one perhaps a little bit more narrow than the other. Um, we have two candidates that um, bring enthusiasm and obvious knowledge. And um, we assume a very different perspective. Let's rank them. Let's stop, you know, unless people have something really new to add, I right. think that we should move forward and at least rank them. I was gonna, I'm sorry. I was going to say that from most people who've talked, what I've heard is basically Bernie is either first or second for nearly everyone. And the other one is not necessarily the same candidate. Right. Um, so that I, I haven't done the calculations. We'd need to do them if we actually did a ranked choice. But that makes me lean towards the consensus person under if we ranked them would be Bernie. Um, well, certainly Pat and Mandy have expressed, from what I've heard, putting Bernie in number one. 
um, and correct me if I'm mistaken, but that's what I heard. I still don't know whether it'd be one or two for me. <laughs> okay, for me <laughs> but it'd be one or two. <laughs> really tricky. Um, I have not really heard from Lynn or from Andy. I am impressed by Joe. I'm impressed by Bernie. Um, this conversation is very helpful to me. Um, obviously, in the back of my mind, purely selfish, is that I'm going to have to reach out to all four candidates and tell them and explain. I mean, I assume I have some obligation to, and I want to explain our reasoning. Um, I'm not looking forward to that, but that's not my problem. Um, so I don't know. You asked, let, let me speak. Um, I, even ranking, I, I share Mandy's struggle. I mean, I, I guess I'm leaning right now to Bernie because I feel that um, we need someone who's been through the wars, someone who can ask difficult questions, has, will have different ways of thinking about things based on his experience. Um, in a normal, more normal time, I might like to have someone who brings experience outside of Amherst, who has strong ties to the community, um, and I, I feel like would, would not be shy, would, would speak up, um, and that would qualify for either Jane or Joe, quite frankly. Um, I think under normal circumstances, I would think, you know, Bernie and Mary Lou, you are wonderful. You've done beyond, above and beyond anything you could ask of anyone, but now it's time for the next generation. That would be my personal feeling. I often feel that way about myself, actually, but, <laughs> um, but in this situation, I just, I'm really reluctant to put people in that, in, yeah. So I guess Bernie, um, and then after that, it's it's a mishmash. Um, I don't know if either Lynn or Andy want to weigh in. Or maybe just from the perspective of what they would like to see most, what's the most important thing for them on this body at this time or things. It's difficult because I look at all four candidates and I can articulate the reason why each one of them should be ranked number one. Uh, but in the end, if we're talking about uh, bringing expertise about municipal finance and uh, bringing some things um, to the uh, committee that um, is going to be useful in the next year as we're dealing with very difficult decisions down the line. I have to go with the experienced people and this Bernie and Mary Lou. Uh, Bernie, because he has the broader experience uh, from uh, all of municipal management, may uh, put him just a nudge above Mary Lou in that. Uh, Mary Lou has extraordinary experience about schools. And a lot of times she will think about questions to ask in school budgeting that the rest of us won't ask or won't think to ask because um, she's had so much experience with it. And uh, also her role in uh, sort of formulating reports to town meeting uh, in how that might be helpful for us and is helpful for us right now, actually, in thinking about how to formulate this report to the council. Um, when you get down to Joe and Jane, I think that you've uh, stated, George, very good reasons for both of them. Uh, and the one hand, uh, you know, Jane for youth and diversity, um, it, is very tempting. I probably put Joe a little bit higher on the list because of Joe's um, family and a little bit longer attachment to the community and knowledge of the community and that, um, you know, to the extent that we're 
we said, one of the candidates said early on that a reason to have resident members is to bring that tie and understanding of the community. Uh, it's just that little bit of longer experience personally and much longer experience uh, for family. Joe kind of puts him in that number three place. So I'm going to go back to the statement I made very early on. And that is, um, if you want experience, I think either Mary Lou or um, Bernie bring that uh, in different ways with different perspectives, education in one case and in uh, the other, uh, the town management experience. Um, Nevertheless, with all of that said, I would go with Jane and she represents a voice in our community that we are not hearing. She has a young child. Um, she's been very involved in some of the more interesting and recent expressions about race. And um, when we have the opportunity I think we need to seize it. So, here I am. Could you, are you comfortable ranking the rest or no? Because right now you have Jane as number one. Well, after that, I would probably go, and I, I, I actually think both Mary Lou and Bernie bring very, very wonderful experience. And, and so does so does Joseph, Jane, but. Yeah, I know, that's right. His, yeah. his rec. His experience parallels uh, some of the more recent, uh, you know, the experience of bringing, I'm, bl I'm blanking on his name, the man that has come on finance committee right. Uh, right. as a resident. Uh, so I'm, I'm not as, and, and I know him. I mean, I, this is what's tough about all this. I know three of the candidates, um, but that's, um, well, then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to push back a little bit, um, just from the point of view, again, of, from your perspective, given what we're going to face for the next year or two, mm -hmm. um, the really, it seems like really difficult financial decisions, capital projects, borrowing, what's going to be the best large, large scale financial approach. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that Jane, given her background in nonprofits, given her background in you know, not particularly related to municipal affairs or, you know, that kind of thing. Do you think that that is what this body is going to need for the next year or two? I mean, my I argument think. was that that in, under more normal times, which is right, this would be, I would be very supportive of this perspective, but I'm just asking, I guess, do you think that the um, the perspective she brings Trumps in your mind. I hate that um, word, George. I know. I'm sorry. Do you think the perspective she brings um, is is uh, more important at this stage, more valuable, more useful to this committee? For me, it's what's useful to this committee, and, and that and may I, be too narrow. But that's what I'm thinking. Right. And I understand. Who did we just lose? Uh, Angela had to go, so I'm taking over for minutes. And I got it. I have. Yeah, I'm sorry, Athena. I told Athena she could leave at, at when we were done with the interviews, and now she's here at one o'clock. Um, okay, now, let me try to answer your question. Sure. I actually think the not just the committee, but the uh, me other members of the town council have expressed in a variety of different ways their own fiscal abilities to weave and look through this situation. That doesn't mean any of us have a silver bullet here, okay? But as I'm looking at the broader picture of what we as a town need to be listening to, that's where I'm coming down. And we need to listen to that in every aspect of the, our world. So I, I just have to say it. No, no, that's, I'm just asking, I'm just asking. So. And I, I really, I mean, I will just say, I've not done the Municipal Finance Committee the way Andy has, but I have been through the wars. 
Mandy's been through the wars. Mandy Jo is one of the people who constantly talks about watching our reserve levels. I don't, I'm not suggesting that we can't use more advice, but I also have enormous confidence in the finance committee and the council in general around our ability to weave through this. So in that light of that, then I want to stand back and I want to look at the broader perspective of what is our community need. Well, I hate to do this, but either I, okay, I can just text and tell people I'm running late. So I, we don't have to, you know, I, I know this puts some of the members on the committee in a really bad situation. I, I'm also for the, I'm leaning towards Jane as my number one and Bernie as my number two. Um, we, we need a vote of some sort for a recommendation. That vote can be split with an extensive report potentially as to why, you know, and I'm not sure what this vote would be, but we don't, normally I, I would probably argue, see if we can get to some consensus where the vote would be unanimous. Um, but I think we've dug down into two competing interests um, and all. And so maybe our recommendation is if you're going to put on, you know, if you're going to put a preference on experience or this or that, here's the recommendation. But if you're going to put a preference on, you know, bringing in new members and this and that, you know, coming up with that and, and having a vote that might be a split vote, maybe even tie, since I've, I've heard that Andy might not vote at all. Um, it might end up a tie vote and we send a tie vote or a non-tie vote to the, com to the council as a whole. It's not ideal. I know it's not ideal because um, it doesn't unfortunately give closure to anyone really. Um, but, but maybe that's our role as a GOL and recommendations and saying, here's the candidates, here's who we believe would be best to serve this role, here's who we believe would be best to serve this role, and we as a committee sort of reached, I hate to use the word stalemate, but stalemate as to which role is more important right now. Um, yeah. So let me just throw in one additional thing about Jane, and it gets back to actually what Mary Lou said, and that is that uh, my experience when I came from a nonprofit into the Finance Committee, and my experience then from the number of years on the Finance Committee and bringing new members of the Finance Committee in, was it generally took two years to gain a level of comfort and experience with both the town budget process, the myriad issues that are town related, and an understanding of municipal finance and the uniqueness of municipal finance. And regardless of what background one had, if um, you did, you know, I think that, uh, uh, you know, assuming that it's somebody who's, um, as we've described Jane, an extremely bright, interested, energetic person, who has um, nonprofit um, experience, but not municipal experience and is not ex uh, familiar with our budgets, um, I think it is a two-year learning curve. And uh, I put that out there. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it, but we should know what we're doing. And I don't think we have two years. we're really in the soup and we're going to be in the soup at least for the next year and maybe beyond. And um, I'm really nervous about putting people in that position who are going to spend at least a year or two just figuring out how the darn thing works. Now, maybe as Lynn argues, there are enough other people around who know how the darn thing works. I know it isn't me. So it's other people on the council. I have um, a Go ahead. Yeah, Pat, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Andy, 
what the other uh, Sharon and Bob, what is, what are their um, are they on for the next two years? Are they on for another year? Is there going to be an opening? In two year terms, I said with that, uh, we and so we had Mary Lou's term as a one year term, so that there'd be some staggering. Yeah, no, I under. But what's Bob's term? And I didn't quite understand what the first part of what you said. And what's Sharon's? Oh, so, uh, both of the other two terms would um, end a year from now. End a year from now. Okay, that yeah. helps me decide who to vote for. Yeah, and, and when I said that about Jane, it wasn't that I was saying don't choose her, uh, um, but choose her because you feel like there's ability and a willingness to make a commitment to it so that she can put in the time to really become familiar and be a, um, an asset to a future committee. And I think that's possible, but it's not, it's going to, the first year will be a learning year. Right. And I want to just point out that a year from now, even though we will only have six months left in our term, we choose the next round of two people. Right, it would be this committee that will make the recommendation. The council will choose, but this committee will make the recommendation. It's possible that both will uh, ask to be renewed. It's possible that both will not. We just don't know. And then we'll be faced with the same problem again about term limits. It's gonna be a constant uh, challenge balancing that against other seemingly important values that Lynn certainly has expressed some of them here. Um, Pat. Um, I feel strongly, that, or I believed very strongly, Jane's uh, commitment to public service. Um, and so I feel like she is a potential person to draw on in another year. Um, and for finance, for other committees, um, and every one of these candidates' voice is important. Um, and I think right now, given where we are, that I would prefer going with a broader experience in municipal government. Um, so I, that Bernie is still my first choice. Okay. Um, at the moment, what it looks like is what Mandy had suggested, unless things change. We have uh, two votes for Bernie and two votes for Jane. And Andy has signaled to a number of us that for understandable reasons, though he may change, he may, he'll make up his own mind, he's a little reluctant to cast an official ballot. Um, but at the moment, it looks like two, two, and one abstention. Oh. I'm still having a really hard time. Um, I, I would be willing to make that a 3-1 for Bernie. Um, I've got other things going on in my mind about maybe being able to recruit either Joe or Jane or some people for planning board. I mean, I'm like... <laughs> but but what I, what, what I would say is I'm willing to make this a 3-1 vote if um, the report can really indicate um this this sort of um tension between experience and bringing on new people um and and everything well, in order to not send it back not send it to the council with a tie um that that would be the reason i'd be willing to move because i have had such a, a hard time but but it's so not to send the recommendation to the council with a tie vote to send it with a vote that has at least an idea of an actual recommendation instead of throwing up our hands almost. Um, <laughs> Just a practical question. Comes to the council with say a vote of three to one or even a vote of two to two, whatever. Comes to, but not a, not a majority, unanim not a unanimous vote. What happens at the council? Do we then, I mean, again, all four candidates are in play? I mean, yeah. would, Basically, it would seem to me that any one of them, no one else, but any one of those four, 
could conceivably be, and we'd have to, the council would have to do what we're doing essentially. And so my message to all four candidates would be, um, this was the vote, but quite frankly, there's serious, uh, you know, divisions and it's going to be ultimately up to the council to decide. I mean, I tell them that anyway, but if it's, if it's five to zero, um, usually that's a pretty good indicator here. It would not be that. And so it basically goes to the council and any one of these four candidates in theory could um, be chosen. Hey, George, I would, I'm going to just go ahead. When we finished the uh, interviews, I did ranking and I'm going to say exactly what the ranking was at the time because I haven't changed. Uh, it was Bernie, Mary Lou, Joe, and Jane in that order. And the reasons were very simple. I was looking in the end for experience um, at this time because I think that we are for the next two years in an extraordinary period. If I thought FY21 was unique, then we were going to have to deal with this again in FY22. I might come out differently, but we are. We know that 22 is going to be really rough. And I think the reason I put Bernie above Mary Lou is I think Mary Lou has really good experience with schools but Bernie's broader experience in um, having actually been a town administrator um, kind of gave me that nudge. And as far as the other two are concerned, I came to Joe as third because of um, his more extensive uh, number of years in Amherst and his family connections in Amherst, giving him a citizen's understanding as well as the fact that he did have a little bit of time on uh, the finance committee and the liaison to the school building committee. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, all four of them, I think, would serve well, they would serve differently. Uh, uh, Jane, it's sort of recognizing that uh, this is a tough year for somebody to come onto a committee and um, being a learning curve, I think uh, this is a difficult year for that, but I think she could could yeah. do it, but it would be a couple of years before she really had the level of knowledge that we were okay. hoping for. And I would only, I would just hope that she would be willing to either run for council or serve another term on, this, on the finance committee if she was chosen this time. Then I'm going to, unless there's an objection, I'm going to either entertain or actually make a motion um, and have us vote. Um, I don't see the point of pursuing this at a future meeting. I think that's clearly no one wants to do that. And I think we've been at this long enough. Um, I certainly have lots of notes. Um, if there is a minority view, I will run that, my report by that minority person or persons um, and make sure that their views are accurately reflected. I certainly will do my best to try and reflect them, but I've done that. In previous situations, I would do that again here. So I'm going to entertain a motion. Actually, I'm going to make a motion that uh, the committee recommend for the position of resident non-voting member of the Finance Committee, Bernie Kubiak, for a term that expires on June 30, 2022. I think I have my dates right. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Pat has seconded, so we have a motion and it's been seconded. Um, any further discussion? All right, well, then I'm going to call the question and uh, we'll proceed to vote. And uh, we're gonna start with uh, Pat. Yes. Pat votes yes. Uh, Lynn? No. Lynn votes no. Um, Mandy? Can you come back to me after Andy? Uh, Mandy uh, passes. <laughs> Politicians voting sucks. Go ahead. <laughs> we'll strike that from the record. Um, the uh, chair votes yes. Um, uh, Andy. Yes. Andy votes yes. Going back to Councillor Haneke. Then I am a no. She's a no. So the I, vote I will say I didn't want to send it to the council with a 2 2 tie. Um, All right. So the vote is no. three in favor and two against. No one abstains. There will be a minority report, obviously. I will send it to both Lynn and to Mandy, and I know they will send me back 
helpful suggestions. Um, I will try to capture the uh, very spirited and I think very helpful uh, but difficult conversation we've had today that now is extended to 115. Um, we're not going to do any more business today. I only left the town manager waiting for me. Oh, he joined the meeting. Oh, I know. I saw. <laughs> who's, who's joined the meeting? No. Oh, okay. um, I, I would like to make sure that it's not stated as a negative vote against Bernie. I just think they're, <laughs> I, I've already made my statement. <laughs> there was three I votes in favor so and two votes. Not in favor, but not negative. <laughs> well, I, I think what, what Lynn and I would go with is um, we, you know, the way I would put it as is um, the two votes were probably for a different candidate. There were three votes for Bernie and two votes for Jane. Right. And I'll say that under different circumstances, Jane would have been my first choice. But um, I right. think, I right. don't know. I just, I'm just feeling like, don't, uh, never mind. Well, maybe I'll send this report to everybody. <laughs> Not just to the minority. We can all approve it at the next meeting before it goes to the that, that is correct. So it will be available at the next meeting. Hopefully it won't take up too much time. Um, I gotta go, you know. I do too, actually. Uh, do you want to stick around for the adjournment or sure, adjourn us? I will adjourn us. Actually, I do have one really quick question just okay. so we know. Um, we have that uh, order for uh, the zoning bylaw amendment article for amending article 11. Yes, yes. And um, I have questions about that particular order, but I don't think we need to do it today. And I think no, not. No, no, I, I can have another that yeah. quickly. Um, the order was drafted by KP Law um, at the request of Christine Brestrup. The, Geo, the CRC voted just the language on the change. It did not vote to approve to recommend the order. It voted to recommend the um, mo the the modification or whatever. I'll explain it more. Um, but I told George to put the order in because it includes the full language of the amendment. And we will look at that at our next meeting, and that is before the next council meeting. So we will have uh, done our duty before the meeting. So. If that, Andy, does that, I think that's- Yes, that's fine. Right. That I put it on this agenda because I thought at the time the council meeting was going to be sooner, but it wasn't. It's the 20th, so we're okay. Great. All right, I'm ready to declare this meeting adjourned. I want to thank Athena. Uh, Lynn, I'm sorry, question? No. Okay, just waving goodbye. <laughs> thank you all. You've been great. It's, it's not easy. And we'll discuss this again at our next meeting. I don't know what I'm going to tell the candidates, but that's my problem, I guess. Um, Athena, thank you for your patience and being with us today. You're welcome. Bye-bye.